I know you. Father Daniel. From my dream. Congratulations on the movie. I really, really enjoyed it, um, specifically because it's this, it's such a crowded market, the exorcism <laughs> subgenre. So always, I mean, no matter how good or how bad a film is, I'm, I always go in with a bit of kind of reticence that it's, not, it's just going to be another replica. And this is totally not the case. I was just speaking to a guy about the same thing. And it, I love, it does kind of follow in the same footsteps in certain things, but it, it really kind of switches things around in a big way, which I uh, really appreciated. So uh, congratulations on that. I loved it. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm glad. The film really shows just how, how much power kind of that religious rhetoric or, or whether it be whatever, any other kind of political rhetoric could be the same. But in this, in this specific case, it shows you how powerful religious rhetoric is. And that was something that I felt kind of really, it was really timely in the fact that, you know, political rhetoric in terms of Trump, even religious rhetoric at the, at the same time. I mean, I was speaking to a guy about um, Kenneth Copeland, you know, he's like, I blow the coronavirus away, these kind of things. People really grasp onto things and, and they're, I mean, as, as crazy as some of them kind of seem, they really have a great deal of power. Is that something that inspired you towards kind of writing about this specific subject matter? Yeah, very much so, actually. I, I'm, I'm really glad you picked up on that. I mean, it's, um, it was, the movie for me uh, was a bit of a call to action, I guess, in a way, um, where, you know, I wanted to go on this journey with this character who, you know, gets into this for technically the right reasons of doing good and, you know, and wanting to, wanting to, you know, defeat evil and, and, but, but, you know, follow the rules and, and sort of within the confines of the institution, you know, of the church and, and in the history and the, and the rituals. And like you said, the language and it all, I think, um, the whole situation, I think to, uh, for lack of a better description, it's, it sort of gets very loud you know, like, like throughout the movie where he's uh, getting lost in it, in a way, you know, um, and it's, and it's seeping in and, and he sort of, and by the end of the film, I feel like he's sort of got to see the forest for the trees in a way and realize this is, you know, ultimately this is about this boy. This is about doing the right thing um, and not, not about what this other person is saying and not about the noise and not about the rituals and everything. It's just about focusing on this boy and saving this boy and doing what he knows to be right and just. Uh -huh. um, and, and then moving forward with that knowledge, you know, as opposed to doing what he's being told is best and, and you know, even though it's against his instincts and what he knows to be right. Um, so, that was, you know, and, 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 I, and then there's, and I think there's an, you know, an undercurrent in the, so I have a bit of an adversarial relationship with the church. <laughs> um, right. I grew up very, very Catholic, you know, went to summer camp, Bible camp, um, and things like that. And I'm no longer uh, uh, practicing, uh, I'm no longer Catholic. Um, but uh, so, you know, I was interested in sort of, um, exploring some of some of those things, you know, as well as far as uh, some of the faults, um, you know, within, but like you said, it's, it's not limited there. There's also within politics and everything. There's, there's this, there's this capacity to sort of, for, for the world to get loud and for us to get lost in it uh -huh. um, and lose sort of just, you know, lose that ability to simplify and, and sort of see things, you know, filter things down to, to the core of what is, you know, what is the message behind Catholicism and, and what can, you know, even as, a, as someone who doesn't practice anymore, you know, growing up that way, the things that I take away are, are you know, you filter it down to be kind you know, love thy neighbor, you know, <laughs> like there are things and, and, and you, and those things, if you double down on, um, then I'm like, I'm with you. Um, I mean, so, it's curious, sorry, no, it's, it's, I'm curious because I mean, I was, I was having, I mean, you, the relation between religion and politics is, 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 is a lot closer than, than a lot of people kind of realize. And I just, yeah. just I, I just had a quick look on internet and it's, it's, it's curious. It's not funny. It's curious that Trump, I mean, I've even got statistics like, like Trump, <laughs> bigger than the world but no donald trump uses i mean more than double the religious 
rhetoric, religious phrases than any other president previously. I, I mean, some people say that he's found religion, but I, I'm of the be belief that he's using it to, to, to gain as much power as possible. And this film really kind of reminded me of these, these kind of things. I'm from New York. I, you know, grew up with Trump sort of in the, you know, around um, in the news and things like that. And uh, nobody's going to convince me that he found religion. Um, but, uh, you know, I, but I will say, uh, one. Of, so where the, the idea for this film came to me and why I was interested in it was, um, you know, I, I would I had finished my first film, uh, The Dark, and it had you know been out there and, and and sort of finished its run, and I was thinking about what to do next. And I knew I wanted to do something a bit more ambitious, um, just in scope. Uh, that film was was fairly sort of intimate, um, and uh, and and I I had read this, I'd come across this book, uh, Hostage to the Devil, by Malachi Martin, and read it, and I found it really fascinating, and it was a take on exorcism exorcists and exorcisms that I, I hadn't read or, or seen before. Um, and so it made me want to, you know, dive further. And it was back in the December of 2018. Um, I started coming across these articles online um, from, you know, real publications. These weren't, you know, uh, blogs or anything. You know, these are, these are well-known publications that were talking about this, um, this phenomenon that over the past decade, there's been a 70% increase in the demand for exorcisms. Mm. And um, so all the stuff that Stephen Lang's character in the archbishop's office early on is talking about, that's all based on, that's all real. <laughs> that's all stuff that I, even though it feels like you're watching it, it's like, you know, this is for movies. It's actually the church started teaching the right. Um, I mean, if I, if these articles are to be believed, um, I don't have firsthand knowledge of this, uh, but uh, the the church um, was started teaching the right again. They opened new academies in Chicago and, and other places, um, and the goal was to have a dedicated exorcist through, for every diocese throughout the country to deal with this increased demand. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, not to say that I necessarily would seek out an exorcist, but um, I found that really interesting. A Get, being coming from the background that I do, um, I can, you know, I I can go there and I can under and I can sort of be in in, in people's shoes who would who would need that and mm -hmm. and sort of be feeling that kind of uh, you know crescendo of of, of uh, anxiety and pain and fear over that time, um, and that also mirrors my reality. You know, I may not turn to exorcism necessarily as an answer, um, but it, it that's the world I was experiencing too, um, was one where I was more fearful and more anxious and and uh, more uncertain and, and, and maybe more distrustful. Um, and so that is sort of the key for me is, you know, when I, when I came in is that I can see if, when I can see a story start to take shape within a broader context, you know, that sort of mirrors the world that I see and that I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, oh, there's something just to be said here. There's something yeah. to talk about. What did the Archbishop tell you about me? You're the best exorcist there is. What he didn't tell you was that they can teach you the prayers, but that's not what separates us from your average priests. You need to be willing to put yourself at risk. Change those clothes. You look like a priest. That goes back to kind of the pulling power of religion. I mean, previously, uh, one, at the same time as exorcisms, previously kind of religion served as a, a type of psychology, psychiatry as well, no? We, I mean, we just put all this trust into people, and, and especially in terms of exorcism, because there's obviously physical it's more of a physical nature and, and people just put their trust in these more than they would do with a with the local doctor absolutely i mean i yeah i mean i i've seen I, one of the reasons why i am sort of not you know uh very much not catholic anymore <laughs> is because maybe not dealing with exorcism but i've seen that happen i've had a family member who sort of refused psychological help and turn to priests instead, um, and seeing that not be useful or helpful. 
Um, and, and I, you know, and, and I, and I was disturbed by that. Um, so, you know, that, that I, I agree with you. And, and also there's this, there's what interests me, um, you know, is in, in the world of exorcism, when you start to, you know, do research and look at this and, and in these articles, they would talk about, you know, in most of these cases, these are people, you know, who are, believe they're suffering from possession, uh, they're suffering from real trauma. You know, there's a lot of past physical abuse, sexual abuse. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it becomes like a trope where it's like, well, that's, and that's where the, you know, that's what allows the demon in, um, which is problematic for me because it's almost like, you know, uh, there's this thing done to them, but it's, you know, because the, 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 there's like a symbiotic sort of, um, the idea is that, you know, people aren't just taken over by an aggressive demon, but they, but in order for it to work, like they have to sort of say yes, you know, they yeah. have to sort of allow the demon in. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's very problematic in lots of levels. Yeah, and then also, you know, in a lot of exorcism, almost all that I've seen, um, it's almost always a young girl. Right. Um, that's being possessed. And so that was very important to me with this film. If you notice, they're all boys, um, which, you know, also has its Other history within the Catholic, yeah. within the Catholic church. Um, so, you know, uh, there's a lot going on <laughs> in the film, I think. Uh, and um, these were, these were things that were conscious choices that I was making um, and, uh, and, and I, and what I was interested in was, you know, all of these things, um, even in the demon voices that there was still a traces of the actual character, the, yeah. the voice of the actors, um, because they weren't, they were in there. They were people, you know, despite everything, these, these people were still there, um, inside and, and their ability to be possessed was not their fault you know they uh and that's why i wanted to explore charlie's background as well and see his pain um you know in real time as it were uh because um this is it, it seems to come from pain and trauma you know uh these 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 possessions mm -hmm. um yeah. as it no, were i'm curious i mean I just li listening to you talk about that it, 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 in a way, religion is, is, is almost the same because if you let yourself into something, whether it be the devil or whether it be the church, it's up to you at the end of the day. And if you're willing to, to kind of let it in, which is something that I thought that the film kind of portrayed beautifully, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I know it's slightly different and it's not, um, maybe not for everybody, <laughs> but, but, uh, but, you know, it's, it's the, it was what interested me. It was, it was the way I was interested in exploring it. And of course, there's the sort of, um parallels with training day and things like that yeah, which i, was, I think I was, is yeah is, I, I had to found parallels with training day but i also found parallels i mean this is a, it's a very straight face very serious film but it, it's almost i said to gay as well the same i said it, it kind of feels like a, a rev, um lethal weapon in reverse or some a kind of a body, <laughs> body cop movie done seriously but with the same with kind of the roles reverse no yeah i mean i, I I think uh, most directly, um, I was I was referencing, you know, Training Day in the sense that uh, it just it really just occurred to me in the process. You know, it's usually that first step for me in the writing process is to have that exciting idea that I feel like at least has the potential to address things that are just slightly, you know, more un universal. Um, and uh, and then going in, I and then I the next step is I want to feel like I'm doing something I haven't seen before. Um, mm -hmm. And and as you mentioned, that's hard with the exorcist exorcism movies, yeah, films. Huh? Um, and so you know, but it occurred to me as I was thinking about it that there's always this this idea of you know there's the exorcist and then his apprentice. There's this mentor mentee relationship, and I was just thinking about that. And Training Day just happened to pop into my head. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the film, and I said hmm, that's interesting. You know, I wonder if. Uh, an exorcist film could sort of fit within that structure and uh you know and then i just started to play and it didn't um you know it, it took a little while to sort of hone in on what it needed to be and how those two worlds were going to interact mm -hmm. um but once it hit 
I really, you know, I wrote the script in 10 days. I mean, it was, the, the whole process was very quick. I mean, the whole process is very quick. Yeah. Um, it took me six years to make my first film and uh, from starting to write to, you know, filming and it took me six months to make this film. So it was like a whirlwind, my uh -huh. head was spinning. Um, Often, oftentimes if you if you're under pressure it, it kind of works in your favor yeah definitely um i mean we're, we're talking there about I, I, I said there that it kind of re resembled in a way of kind of these buddy cop films um was there any specific reason why you did that um, um i mean and it does come across in, in various places it comes across almost like a police procedural movie because it kind of like guy's character tells the other guy to take his his clothes off because he looks like a priest instead of he looks like a cop it's obvious that he's a cop you know <laughs> even 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 what even some of the people that they go on question they just assume that they're cops when when they're not dressed in in their robes no um was there any specific reason why you kind of it has all these kind of double entendres and feels very procedural cop I, movie at the same time i think probably you know i i wish there was a smarter answer to that <laughs> <laughs> I think I think probably you know it really comes down to um, I, I felt in a lot of the Exorcism movies, especially with the Exorcist itself, uh, you know that that first great film. You know, one of the things that 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 uh, was so effective in a way was how it was just sort of in a procedure. You know, it was just like step by step by step, um, and it was this one uh, girl who in, and 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 solving the case as it were. Um, and, uh, and so I thought, so that was sort of the structure that I was, that I was going by. And, and I think that's why I thought, you know, there's that. And then in a police movie, it's sort of similar, you know, it's, it's, there's this procedure and there, there are these, you know, it's almost like Stephen Lang's character sort of feels like the, the, the death sergeant, the, you know, the sergeant or whatever, yeah. you know, when, when, uh, when, if you talk about lethal weapon, you know, uh, uh, Riggs and Murtaugh get get reamed out by the captain, you know, in the office, and um, and there is very much that that sort of uh, that that feel to it, which um, you know uh, was as structural as it was just plain fun in a little way, <laughs> a little bit um, to to play with. Uh -huh. I'm interested about the the cast that you chose because I, I the last time I spoke to a guy, he'd been in a film um, Brimstone. Brimstone. He'd been in a film called sure. Brimstone. I don't know if you've seen it, and that, and that was another very did, religious yeah. character and when i spoke to him about it, I, it was it, i was i was not surprised but i was it was interesting to hear that he was very kind of he wasn't he's not a religious person but he's very interested in in religion and and kind of its effects and and everything his correlations um so i i'd, I'd love to, to to know what he brought to the table and and why you what you wanted for these two buddy cop characters to, to kind of what you wanted them to clash about specifically I mean, Guy is so smart and intuitive, um, and and like I, I think, you know, it's sort of similar to what we're talking about. He's so into interested in the psychology, um, and uh, and you know, so from the beginning, what he really, you know, I knew that with Peter, I wanted a sort of larger than life character that that we would be that we would want to keep, you know, we couldn't take our eyes off him. You know, we'd want to watch him and sort of look up to him and enjoy his presence as much as Daniel does, you know, and, and, and it's almost like a snake charmer, you know? Um, and, uh, and, and, I, and I thought that Guy, but Guy also has a sort of uh, humanity and, and, and a subtlety uh, to his performance as well that, that I really appreciate. Um, He's just a fantastic performer, and I I always knew that. Um, I just didn't know how fantastic until I met him and worked with him. And he's just so dedicated. I mean, I'd just be getting, you know, texts or calls from him throughout the process just to say, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I feel like I want to say it this way, or can I say any? And he's just so respectful in the process. You know, he would never just show up and just say, I mean, he always would check in. And I'm always like, you're Guy Pierce, like, <laughs> Do you know <laughs> you want to say it that way say it that way <laughs> um, but uh you know i pretty much trust you implicitly um but he really you know he was really very conscious and even to the point of like keeping me in check of you know just being um not wanting to get ahead of the audience you know and and sort of uh knowing where the audience is at every moment and checking in um 
and uh, just just the the collaboration and uh, and just as a as a human being, I mean, just one of the nicest people, yeah. um, and just generous and kind and and humble and uh, you know, you just yeah. again, I was excited and and astounded that he wanted to do this and feel like you know I did something. I was a saint in a past life uh, that that he agreed, um, but. Uh, but he's better than, you know, he's better than I could have ever expected. So he, he was fantastic. Well, if I was just to finish off, then we're running out of time. I mean, you say it took you six years, six years to do uh, The Dark and then yeah. uh, slightly less to do this one. Um, slightly less. Obviously, you, you must be hopeful that you can get the next project out as soon as possible. Is there anything that you, you've been able to work on during lockdown that you can, you can tell us or anything that you'd, like, you'd like to get off the ground as soon as possible? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm trying, you know, I'm I'm sort of a workaholic. I, I I'm I'm ready to go. I mean, obviously, COVID makes things difficult. Um, I'm you know I'm currently attached to a project written by a friend of mine, this uh, great writer named Trent Atkinson, an Australian writer. Um, if you don't know him, then you will. I guarantee you, he's fantastic. Um, and and we're in the process of trying to get that off the ground. It's a it's a, another horror film. Um, I, I'm you know, both. And then I'm, I'm co-writing a film with a friend of mine from uh, the graduate film school I went to, uh, which is, which is in the vein, sort of slightly in the vein of the dark again, which is a little more of a um, horror fairy tale um, that uh, is, is quite exciting. I'm pretty excited about it. So uh, yeah, I mean, you know, just, just uh, chugging along and, 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 and trying to be, you know, just want to keep working. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. Well, Justin, thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much. Yeah, for it was a I pleasure. I really enjoyed it. I wish you the best of luck with the film when it comes out at the end of the week. And thank hopefully I get to speak to you sometime soon about one of these projects that you've uh, just mentioned. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Thanks. All the pleasure. best. Take care of yourself. Bye you now. Too.